Rather than United, I've got many, many positional problems, and I think it would be fair to say that right wing is a very big one of those. The signings of Anthony, very expensive signing of Anthony, the very expensive signing of Jaden Sancho, initially seemed very much like game changers, particularly when we had Mason Greenwood waiting in the wings, seemingly ready to hit that world-class kind of level. Um, but it hasn't worked out for different reasons for all three, and it hasn't worked out at all. It's created a gap on the right wing that requires immediate upgrading. Despite the anticipated potential of both Anthony and Sancho, both players have not met the standard at United. And as the club is looking ahead, I think there is a clear need for a direct and explosive right winger that can add some attacking dynamism that is much needed on the flank in today's game. Before we get into that, do me a favor, just give the video a like, it helps with the algorithm. And if you're new around here, then hit that subscribe button as well. Right. What we want is a player that has got a combination of ball retention, because you can't just lose it willy-nilly, um, and the ability to break a game open. That is absolutely key. Um, and there is one name who's actually, potentially, a rival of Alejandro Garnacho's already, and that is young Argentinian winger uh, Matea Sule. At the moment, he is on loan at Frosinone, uh, on loan from Juventus. Obviously, he's Argentinian. He predominantly features on the right wing, but he also features as an attacking midfielder and occasionally as a shadow striker. He is a left-footed player, as you would expect for a right winger in the modern era. 20 years of age. And he's been likened to an Angel Di Maria sort of regen. And a lot of people are just immediately going, anyway, later's next. But, okay, personality-wise didn't work out for Di Maria here, but he actually hasn't been the worst signing that we've seen in a Manchester United shirt, despite the fact that he clearly didn't want to be here. And actually, what he's done throughout his career has been um, absolutely sensational. Now, let's talk about Sule. So... This season, Sule broken through and showed his ability. He is a bit of a free-roaming right winger, uh, and he's statistically one of the best creative players in Europe's big five leagues. He's got eight goals and one assist to his name in Serie A this season, which doesn't sound like one of the best creative players in Europe's top five leagues, and that is why I think he's going to go under the radar a little bit, because he hasn't got the very, very obvious, oh my God, have you seen this sort of creative numbers. Um, but we'll drill into some of the details. Now, he actually loves to come inside and create. He genuinely thrives in the pockets, in the central areas where the vision and spatial awareness is so good. It means that he can hurt the opposition defence by drifting around in those spaces and cutting in and through. And a big part of that top spatial awareness is his scanning, which some of the players in the United squad still need to learn. When Sule carries the ball, he's got his chin up all the times and he's identifying the space around him and around others. And I think it makes him make good decisions. He isn't afraid to drop deeper and receive the ball. Uh, and I think, again, he has the creativity to spark attacks to life doing so from deep. He is a very much give and go player. He loves a one two. He gets teammates moving with a little bit of tempo about him. And he is a driving force himself that pushes the team forward. He has got elite technical dribbling that sucks in defenders in a bit of a, a way that would remind you of the way Jack Grealish certainly was doing it at Aston Villa where he's just drawing two and three around him and then with good timing and good decisions somebody else is free because you've dragged players away from them not only is Sula getting into the right decisions but I think he's doing it on uh, a consistent basis as well he has improved his own off the ball movement in transition and I think he's really turning into a bit of a potent goal for it as actually stacks up with the eight goals that he's got this season another part of his game where he shines is the delivery from wide areas and again one assist on the face of it doesn't stack that up He's in the right half space. He loves to get the ball chipped or lofted over to uh, to sort of what towards the back stick in the box, and he also really executes really really well weighted pass um, through balls that are you know onto an overlapping fullback or into a striker that's peeled off towards the near post. You know whether it's on the ground or whether he puts them into the air, he seems to 
execute these passes to a really, really high standard. Now, he isn't the quickest over the longest distances, um, but he does have that initial great burst of speed, which I think might be why he does get likened to Di Maria. You think Di Maria can... And, and sometimes that's all you need. Operating in the final third, you don't need to be Usain Bolt. You know, it's great on a counter-attack, of course, but realistically, most of the, the duels that you see players operating in, they're in those... 15 yard 10 yard kind of pockets and he's got the acceleration in those areas he's got that agility he's got that um change of direction really really fast he's got a low center of gravity that lets him ride challenges and and evade really effectively sometimes it's not just about that raw 100 meter pace um but he isn't he is noticeably slower than probably Garnacho and, and and Rashford, I think it would be fair to say. Um, and again, he's great at bringing teammates into it. And that's where you start to see what looks like a team doing really well. Well, you have to have players within the team that are going to facilitate other players. If everyone thinks they're the end of a, of a run, then it's not going to go well for them because they'll think they're getting it and they're the ones that has to finish this move off ones that are going to keep the ball moving get it rotated bring others into the game they're the ones that are going to start facilitating what looks like teams and pattern play when realistically it's just it's just players that know how to play with other players um but he is great at the interchange with teammates and the half space is where he lives and operates and, and does his most dangerous work from. And that's when he seems to start getting those quick passes, playing his way uh, out of danger and progressing it forward and, and into the box. Uh, he is a, a two-way dribbler. He takes his man on when 1v1, which I love. Uh, and even though he's predominantly left-footed, he isn't only left footed when it comes to uh, his dribbles. He will go both way. Uh, and he's in the 94th percentile for successful take on. So this isn't just like, oh, I watched him and he looks all right. The data backs it all up. Sule is, is generally entertaining. He is the, the sort of player that will get you off your feet. He's got a level of flair uh, and a level of confidence that makes it really, really engaging watching him play. There is an inevitability about him. He looks like he's always looking to make something happen. And when he has the ball in certain areas, he will make something happen. And here's the kicker. And here's why I think Ten Hag likes him. Out of possession, he works hard. He is tenacious and he is a presser. He's in the 75th percentile for tackles. He's in the 89th percentile for blocks. He's getting about. He isn't just standing still and waiting for the ball to come back to him. He's out there hunting it and trying to get it back. His profile allows teams to be tactically versatile. Um, he could be a situational number 10, uh, as required. He could be a second striker. He could be a, a right winger. He can play hugging the touchline. Um, he could probably even play as an eight in a diamond. Um, and he seems to have the game intelligence to just know what the game needs. And it, it's just, sometimes it's just doing the simple things. Like when you watch Kobe Maynard at the moment, or even, you know, we saw Martinez come back into the fold this weekend. There's just... A, a, a way of playing that's on a different frequency to some of the players that are in the United squad at the moment. I think he is a coach's dream. Um, and I think he provides Ten Hag with work rate and an outlet and a quality of chance creation that Manchester United don't have at the moment. I like him. Let me know your thoughts on him in the comments. See you in the next one. Hey, thank you for watching the video. If you are new around these parts, then don't forget to subscribe. My channel is proudly supported by my community on Patreon. If you'd like to get a little bit of extra content, a Discord group, meetups, five-a-side games, weekly podcasts, behind the scenes, and even an occasional bit of transfer news, as and when I get it, then for the price of a pint, you can show your appreciation for the content that we make and get some goodies for doing so as well. Check the link in the description or click the button right here. You'll also find all of my socials here too if you want to follow me on any of those platforms. Nice one.